Git rebase is a command used to integrate changes from one branch into another branch. It helps in maintaining a linear project history. Rebasing replays the changes from the target before applying the source. This is different from merging, which creates a new commit that combines the changes from both branches. Rebasing allows for a cleaner and more organized project history, and we'll see why that's important. All of this sounds nice on paper. Let's see what it really means and what it really looks like. I highly recommend you read the git manual for git rebase, but I'll try to say it in my own words. When you merge two branches, you just integrate both changes. Merge is always a forward moving change record. Alternatively, rebase has a powerful history rewriting features. Consider the following scenario. We started off at the same place. At some point in time, we started writing code. And then there was one commit and then another one, but at some point we branched out and we now have the main branch and the feature branch. This can create all sorts of issues. For one, we not necessarily want all those commits from the feature branch to be integrated into the main branch. There is an approach that says that the main branch should only hold merges and commits that belong to specific features that were developed as part of the application. And so one option will be to git squash the commits. We'll touch on that. Having all that said, let's see what Rebase can do for us. Consider this drawing. So instead of taking the two point in time and trying to merge them, we can take the feature branch and move it forward. Now, if you're asking yourself, why is that even important? Check out the Git log for the Kubernetes project. Look how nice and tidy it all is. Every commit belongs either to a feature that was merged or a massive change introduced to the tree. Everything is super clear and super understandable. Here's my Git log for a demo project. Look at the commits and try to understand what's going on. Pretty sure you can't. You're probably asking, but still, why is that important? So let's consider a scenario where we now have a bug in the application. An experienced developer would run git bisect to find the sneaky commit. Here's how it works. You start by running git bisect start. Then you run the application and tell git where the bug exists. This will be marked as bad or isn't, and that will be called good. You also want to find one commit in the past where the bug did not exist and then copy the hash and let Git know about that as a good commit for reference. This will help Git shard the commit history into a binary tree, which it will traverse using the good and bad signs until you're left with one single commit that can be marked. So here's the reference commit and Git tells me that there's seven steps more or less until we find it and we should now tell it whether that's good or bad. Every time that I'm doing that, I'm probably in the background going, running some tests, understanding whether the bug is still with me or not, and telling Git if that's okay or not. I'm just making it up as I go until we found the single commit that's responsible or introduced the bug. Fast forward and at the end of the process, we get one commit that's responsible for what went wrong. And now we have the commit where the bug was first introduced from where we can either revert it, fix the bug and move on forward, but it really helps with finding bugs. Now if we go back to my demo repo, where I have a terrible set of commits and commit names, you can understand why it'll be so hard to understand and find the introduction of a bug. Let's remember I just went through seven or eight steps to find the bug. Imagine I'm going to have to go through dozens or maybe hundreds of commits to understand what went wrong. So let's see this in action. One way to run rebase is an interactive shell. Adding minus i or minus minus interactive would open this shell where you can see the different commits that are going to be rebased and the options below. Pick is the default one where the commit just being inserted the way it was. There's R. R stands for reword, which is basically taking the commit but changing the commit message. And the other option, which is pretty much the one I use all the time, is S for squash. And squashing basically means taking the same commits, keeping the changes, but ignoring the fact that it was a commit. And that lets us combine a lot of commits in many changes into one single nice commit that's tidy and easy to understand. And later on, when we'll merge that into the main or master branch, it'll create a nice tree that's easy to understand and easy to debug when we need to. So the interactive rebase is really nice to us and let us see the commits that are going to be squashed, what were the commit messages before and offers that we make one change and name it with a different commit and give it one message that will kind of summarize everything up. So I'm just giving a general message, adding tasks and let's see the long now. So there we go. Adding tasks is the one commit that I see on top. Everything else below is the other history that we had before merging or before squashing rather all the commits that we had. 
there are the commits on the other branch, adding task 4, 3, 2 and 1. In pretty much the same way that we just squash different commits, there is the option to drop them completely. Dropping, as it sounds, is basically ignoring the commit ever happen, not only the message but the entire change. If I mark them with D or just write drop as you can see below, I can drop the commits completely and they will never even happen. So I'm using R to mark that I want to redo the message and I'll drop the other commits to see what I'm left with. I'll mark the last one as S for squash. If you've been following though, you probably understand that there's somewhat of a problem with this kind of a scenario because I'm basically telling Git to keep one change, ignore two in the middle and then squash the last one. And that would necessarily create a conflict. So naturally the sequence of changes doesn't make sense. You can see the conflict in the to-do file. Let's help Git make sense of the change so we can see how dropping actually works. So here I am back at my interactive rebase menu. I'm going to redo the first commit, squash the second one and then drop the last two ones. This makes more sense obviously in the sequence of operations as I'm dropping the last two commits that happen. So now I'm only left with adding task one as a commit message and if you remember we left one, two but dropped three and four. And there it is task one, task two and three and four are completely gone because they were dropped. And now one last gem. If you know me, you know how much I love NeoVim and its integration with everything, specifically its integration with Git. Here I can Git rebase within Fugitive, which is the Git plugin for NeoVim. I'll also link up here below to the video that I made about Fugitive. And look how Git rebase fully integrates into NeoVim using Fugitive. I get the exact same interactive menus. I can see the same messages or the same commits that are handled picked, squashed, dropped, whatever I want to do, I can do it right from NeoVim and that makes everything much more simple. To me, this makes a lot of more sense because I'm writing the code in NeoVim, which is my IDE, and then I can keep managing stuff within it. I can also do this in tandem with my terminal if I, when it makes sense or it's more convenient. There's a ton of more NeoVim and Git goodness in both my playlists. Please do check them out.